the smoke and fire coming out of the top of the volcano, and they could see the lava coming down the hill, and they could see their town disappearing, one building after another. Now, the people of Iceland are tough and brave and clever. You have to be to live in so harsh but beautiful a place. And so they got together and they said, we don't want to lose our town without a fight. And more importantly, we don't want to lose our harbor. Because if the lava fills up the harbor, it's the best harbor in all of Iceland. And we can't be fishermen again, and we'd love to do that. So they came back fighting with one thing you have plenty of when you live on a small island. They came back fighting with water. With powerful pumps and huge hoses and water cannons. They squirted water on the advancing lava. And of course, it immediately made a big cloud of steam. They couldn't see what was happening. But for a moment, the breeze blew the steam away, and they could see the lava was still coming forward. So they pulled their water cannons back, but they didn't give up. More and more, thousands and thousands of gallons of seawater. But the lava kept coming forward anyway. So they kept pulling their water cannons back, but they didn't give up. And slowly, that cold seawater started cooling off the lava, and it got stiff and hard, just like a crayon. And by doing that, they, they built a solid lava dam that stopped the liquid lava behind it. And they saved about half of their town. Eventually, the volcano stopped erupting. Now, I mentioned that the people of Iceland are clever as well as tough and brave. And they found that because lava rock is full of holes, even though it cools and hardens on the top within just a few hours, it'll stay hot hot underneath for a very, very long time, many, many years. So they found that if they drilled holes into the lava rock, because it's acting like a blanket on top, if they drilled holes into it and pumped water into the hole, they got hot water back, free hot water for cooking and bathing. They didn't need expensive water heaters for their new home. They had so much free hot water that they built their new homes with pipes running back and forth inside the walls. And they pumped all that free hot water through it, and it heated up the whole house. And then they found that if they drilled really deep into the lava rock and pumped water in, they didn't get hot water back. No, they got steam back. And steam, as you've seen, can be harnessed. It's powerful stuff. It can be used to make electricity. This electric light right here is being generated in a power plant not far from here where we are using expensive coal, oil, or gas to boil water. And the steam turns a generator, and that is bubble power. But they had all that heat for free. So they had free hot water, free home heating, and free electricity for their new town. They also had a, had a heck of a lot of rock. They broke up some of that lava. They built a breakwater, making their harbor even better than it was before. Now, that's just one of maybe two times we've ever been victorious over a volcano. Usually, we lose. Can't talk about volcanoes without mentioning a place called Hawaii. Hawaii, our 50th state, a group of islands out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And out there, the crust of the earth, which is thin to begin with, is extra, extra thin under the ocean, under the islands. And the magma has an extra hot spot right underneath it. And so the magma is so hot, it will actually melt its way right through the crust of the earth and come out and pile up on the floor of the ocean. But nobody knows it's happening because it's deep under the ocean. And it'll pile up and pile up until it's as big as a mountain. But nobody knows it's happening because it's still deep under the ocean. And it takes about 80,000 years for that mountain to build itself tall enough to poke its head out of the water. And the part above the water, those are the islands of Hawaii. And because the lava becomes good soil, soon there's a beautiful jungle growing on it and we call it paradise, and we build hotels there, and we go vacationing there. And every single person who lives in Hawaii, not one of them is living near a volcano. No, they're all living on the very tip top of a volcano that is much bigger than the island that they can see. The tallest mountain in the world is not Mount Everest. If you count from the, top, from the bottom of the ocean where it starts to its top, the mountain that makes the biggest island of Hawaii is taller than Everest is above the ocean. And in sheer volume, it is much, much bigger. And it built itself with bubbles. Now, because the people of Hawaii have lived there for thousands of years, 
The Hawaiian natives have wonderful stories, myths, and legends about the goddess of volcanic fire, Pele. And I'm going to tell you just one of many stories about her. On the biggest island of Hawaii, which is called Hawaii, there are two mountains. One is a beautiful snow-capped peak called Mauna Kea, thought to be the home of the goddess of ice and snow. Yes, you can actually go skiing in Hawaii. You have to go to the very, very top of a very tall mountain called Mauna Kea. But on that same island is a very different mountain. It is capped with fire, an active volcano called Mauna Loa, thought to be the home of the goddess of fire, Pele. And you can remember these two mountains, Mauna Kea go skia, Mauna, Mauna Loa don't go up. And so this is the home of Poliahu, the goddess of ice and snow, and this is the home of Pele, the goddess of fire. Well, the story goes that a young man who was the chief of his tribe, living on another island many miles away, went to sleep one night, and he had a special magical dream. He dreamed of a beautiful girl, and in his dream, he fell in love with this girl. And when he awoke, he knew he had had a special magical dream. He knew she was a real person, and that she lived on the, on the big island where the two mountains and the two goddesses were. And so he resolved in his heart to make the dangerous journey across the sea in an open canoe with a single sail, to find this girl, to win her heart, bring her back home with him, marry him, uh, marry her, and she would help him rule his tribe. And so as he approached the mountain, uh, the island, the two goddesses were high in their mountains and they could see him coming from far away. And he was a good looking young man and goddesses are spoiled brats. Awesome powers, no parental guidance, nobody to say, no, you can't have that. They want whatever they want. And so one of them said, oh, he's so good looking. I want him for myself. But the other one said, no, I want him for myself. No, I want him for myself. And they started fighting over him. And Pele, who had the more fiery temper, suddenly got violent. And she threw fire and lava all over Poliahu's mountain of snow, melting her snow, taking away her power, and driving Poliahu away. But out over the cold, cold ocean. Poliahu regained her strength, and she came back fighting with a terrible storm of ice and snow. And so it was a battle of the elements, fire and ice, fire and ice, a disaster for the rest of the island. But while they were fighting, they weren't paying any attention. And the young man found his dream girl, and they got away. And to this day, we know that Pele and Poliahu are still mad at each other over this. How do we know? Because Every once in a while, all the snow on Mauna Kea will suddenly melt. So we think, oh, that must be Pele up to mischief, trying to annoy Poliahu. And every once in a while on Mauna Loa, there'll be a little sprinkling of snow. So we know, oh, that must be Poliahu up to mischief, trying to annoy Pele. So that's just one of many stories that come from the Hawaiian Islands about the goddess of volcanic fire, Pele. Down and push down and everybody watch. Oh, did you see that? That was called a PHTTT. That was a 1.3 or something. Just a little gas and dust comes out, no big deal. Nobody pays a bit of attention. Okay, let's go for two years and see what happens. One year, all the way up. Everybody watch. Boom. Now that kind of eruption is called a, and that's spelled P B T T T. And that's how volcanoes make themselves bigger, one after another. Just a little, a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. If volcanoes didn't go, if they only went kablooey, they wouldn't be mountains. They would be holes in the ground. And there actually are volcanoes called super volcanoes that never go, they only go kablooey. And it's bad news for the whole world because they can throw so much dust into the sky. It can cool the whole world off so much 
that it can trigger a short ice age, and it would be major disaster. Just 20 odd years ago, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, a regular volcano erupted, threw so much ash around the world that the whole world was cooled off just enough so that food crops for the next two years were not as abundant and food prices went up. If it had been worse, there would have been food shortages and there would have been starvation. This is why we have to understand these things because our lives actually depend on it. Oh, and by the way, there's a super volcano right in the middle of our country. There are holes in the ground. They're not, vol they're not mountains. So it's hard to recognize that they actually are volcanoes. In the middle of our country is a place called Yellowstone National Park. It's a big valley where the rocks beneath are very hot and the groundwater boils and comes out in these beautiful geysers. And for many years, the volcanologists there said, there's so much volcanism here. Where the heck is the volcano? They finally realized they're standing inside of it. The valley of Yellowstone National Park is the opening of a super volcano. And when this thing goes off, it's going to be bad news for the whole world. But don't worry, it only goes off every 150 million years or so. And the last time was about 150 million years ago. The lake in the middle of the valley is tilting slightly, which means the ground is, the magma underneath is kind of doing this. You know? So we need to watch this thing. All right, let's go further. Uh, Isaac, shall we go five years? All right, five years, all the way up and all the way down. One, two, three, four, one more, five, and everybody watch. Boom! Now that's an eruption that's going to cause trouble for the people living here. get in to help. It's covered up the crops so there's nothing for them to eat. It's broken down the roofs of the houses so there's nowhere for people to stay. And exposure and, and hunger is what harms people the most. And most people don't have armies and helicopters to help. Most people in the world are on their own. So we need to be able to tell them ahead of time to get out of town before these things happen. Shall we go longer? Yeah, yeah. Ten years? Yeah, ten years. Let's go twenty years. Yeah. Now twenty years is enough time for people to completely forget what the volcano can do. That's the problem with volcanoes, is they can be quiet for so long that people forget about them. Now, twenty years means they've come back, they've rebuilt, they've started families, they're having children, and their children are having children. And the only people who remember what the mountain can do are the grandparents. And they say, don't build your home so close to the top of the mountain, it's dangerous. Oh, Grandma, don't worry about it. Listen to your grandparents. They know a lot. They've survived so much. OK, now, 20 years. There's going to be 20 Isaacs inside pushing back. So at the last few, it's going to be tough, you know, so if you just need a little extra weight, we can do the last bit together. It's, it's kind of tough. You'll be a little sore here tomorrow. Okay, so here we go, everybody. Get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, take your time, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, the last half is harder, 12, 13, you're doing great, 14, 15, 16, you want to do the last a couple of pounds, 17, 